Welcome to today's Daily Dose of Maths and this video is for O-Levels people who are going to appear for Paper 1. The syllabus code is 4024 and if you're going to appear for Paper 1 O-Levels, this video is very important for you. Please make sure that you watch this video till the end. So we're going to discuss how to approach your paper on your exam day. Of course, I advise everyone to take uh, to watch this video, understand this plan and do apply this on a few past paper questions before you actually take your Cambridge exam. So let's start with the base idea. Uh, what we're going to do is for your O levels paper one exam, you will have two hours to attempt around 20 to 25 questions. We're going to break your entire exam in three loops. So there is loop number one, loop number two, and loop number three. You're not going to attempt your exam in two loops as a standard practice. So we have three loops that we are going to follow. In general, students, what students do is they try to do the exam in two loops. The first loop is basically uh, about all the questions that they think they know or they can manage to do. And the second loop is about the harder questions which, are, which they are unable to do. By doing the question in this way, it generally leaves candidates fall sh falling short of time and uh, they are unable to do the entire paper. So there is a lot of time problem associated with paper one. And if you want to get rid of that, this is the perfect way to attempt a O-Levels paper one. So in loop number one, we are going to choose those questions only which are easy and they do not have a reading time. So make sure your question does not have a reading time. So these questions will not have a reading time and they will be easier questions. Let me give you some examples about these. So these will include generally arithmetic questions. These will be indices. These will be factorization, simultaneous equation solving, algebraic uh, expressions and their manipulation, standard form, significant figures. And these are the sort of chapters that will come over here in this category. Uh, generally we'll put proportionality over here. If you're comfortable, you can use circle properties and uh, symmetry and polygons over here as well but if you're not comfortable with them you can bring them to the second loop as well so the first loop is going to be all those questions which do not have any reading time at all so uh, the kind of questions I will not be doing in loop one would be a probability percentages ratios these are easier topics but these involve reading time so we're not going to do them in loop one in loop one generally we are aiming to score uh, to have around 30 plus marks, around 30 marks, 30 to 35. Do not try to push 35 because we're going to have uh, very less time later on otherwise. So we will do 30 marks ideally and we will give 30 minutes for this loop. So spend your first 30 minutes of your exam doing these questions which will have no reading time. And the best benefit of that is you are going to have a good flow of exam questions before you start going into some trickier questions. So these are going to be uh, 30 marks, 30 minutes, and our target is we want to score 100% in these 30 marks. There is no lenience. There is, uh, these are going to be obvious questions. These are going to be very straightforward questions. There is very less margin of error over here. So in first 30 minutes, you're going to attempt 30 marks and you're going to aim for 30 marks. This is very important. If, you have, if you're watching this video two, even two to three days before your exam, you must take uh, some five to six past paper questions, a random past paper question papers and do loop ones from them. And by the time you're done with loop ones, you will see a, a gradual increase in your marks. Of course, you're not going to manage to be on 100% right in the beginning. You will have to go through five, six loop one exams and then you will be able to do that. Now, before moving on to loop two, let me make you understand how you're going to mark loop one. So you get your exam paper, you open your paper and you start marking loop one questions. Just start circling them uh, on every page and make sure you're not reading the questions because if you're reading the questions, you're trying to understand them and that will cost us time. And since loop one questions will have no reading time, you're just going to open a page, look at the questions only, which do not have any reading time and they have very clear one, one letter or one alphabet, uh, one word or two word or very simple expression of instructions, choose them for loop one. And once you have them for loop one, uh, just circle them and keep on going. Once you have marked the loop one questions, 
do count the marks that you have marked for loop once and that is because we want to make sure that we do not exceed 30, 32, 33 marks because we want to finish them in 30 minutes. Sometimes students get uh, in the beginning so when students are marking loop one questions, they tend to mark all the questions that seem uh, easier and eventually they end up marking like 45, 47 marks in loop one and then they get into trouble because then they're trying to do those 47 marks in 30 minutes, which is near to impossible. So do not do that mistake. So first of all, we're going to mark loop ones and count their marks before attempting them. Now start attempting loop ones and within 30 minutes, you are done with these 30 marks. Now you come back to the start of the paper. Now come the loop two questions. These are easy questions, but they have a lot of reading time involved. So there is some reading time involved and these questions are very uh, familiar to us. All of, uh, we will attempt trigonometry over here, percentages, ratios, mensuration. Uh, you will attempt vectors over here, transformation, loci if you're in O levels. And um, so these, all of these chapters are going to be here. So in the second loop, we are attempting every question and those which we find easy, we're going to attempt them. And generally in every paper, Loop one, uh, loop two is around 40 marks. Now, once you have 40 marks over here, our, we are going to, uh, since they are going to have a lot of reading time, we are going to allot a lot of time to it as well. We're going to allot one hour to this portion. And we are aiming that we achieve around 90% over here. So we are aiming somewhere around 35, 36 marks over here. I'm keeping a margin of error because these are a little bit trickier questions. These will have some problematic parts and there is a margin for that. Now, after that, there will be some questions which are really hard and while you're doing loop two, you will be unable to solve them. We are going to categorize them as loop three. These are the genuinely hard questions in this exam. Now, you will identify them while doing loop two. And how are you going to identify them? You're going to, of course, get stuck on them. And what is the criteria of staying stuck on a question? So for example, you're stuck on a part and it's worth, say, two marks. You are not supposed to stay stuck for more than two minutes over there. So if it's a two mark question, make sure you keep an eye on the clock. And if you are stuck here for more than two minutes, just leave the question, go ahead. You will get time for that question in the loop three portion. So while you're doing loop two questions, if you're getting stuck at a question, just look at the marks, try to think in those minutes. If it's a three mark question, try to think in three minutes. If within three minutes you're unable to figure this question out, just leave it, you will get more time for this question and uh, we will do that in loop three portion. Please do not try to wrestle with harder questions in loop two. Uh, there are many students who try to do this and they come back from exam and they tell us that, oh, I spent like 15 minutes on this two mark question. That is totally nonsensical. That is basically destroying your own grade. Do not do that. So if you're getting stuck at a question, make sure that you're not, not stuck on that part for more than the number of marks allocated and that is the number of minutes you should spend. So for a two mark question, there are two minutes to stay stuck. For a three mark question, you have three minutes to stay stuck on that. And in loop three, once we were done with loop two, we have loop three that will have around 10 marks. They, in general, we have observed that there are around 10 marks in every paper, which are really, really hard and really, really tough questions. And now you will see the insight to this paper system. I understand that these questions are very important for many people. Many, all of, almost all the good students want to do all the hard questions correctly, but the problem is there is not enough time generally. But with this approach, you guys can see we have spent 30 minutes on loop one, one hour on loop two, and we still have 30 minutes left. So you have 30 minutes left for these 10 marks, and our aim is just to get 50% of them right. We are not aiming to get all of the harder parts right. We are aiming that we just try to figure out some portion of it uh, correctly. And if we are able to do that, we are very happy with that because the rest of the time we're going to use to recheck our exam. And there is a 10% rule that I have always 10% recheck rule. I have always experienced that whenever we recheck our exam carefully, 
we will find 10% of our silly mistakes. Whatever marks you're getting, you will be able to increase your marks by 10% generally. Because for example, let's put it in reverse. Whenever you attempt a paper and try to look at the marking schemes, you generally find some silly mistakes and they generally amount up to like 10% of your grade. And this is exactly what we're trying to do when we're doing loop three. We're trying to do the harder questions and then we're going to save that time for the rest of the time, we're going to recheck our exam, try to find the silly mistakes that we are later going to go out of the exam hall and regret about. It's your job to find those, those mistakes over there. So this is the loop system that you're going to follow. In the first loop, no reading parts and only 30 marks. Uh, do not make sure make sure that you do not make your loop one more than 30 marks because otherwise it will not be able, uh, you you will not be able to finish them in 30 minutes so we are aiming 100% marks in loop 1 around 90% marks in loop 2 and around 50% marks in the harder questions if you follow this system i guarantee you that number 1 you are not going to get short of time in paper 1 number 2 you are going to get a top grade but to make sure that this works with you you have to try this with at least five to six papers before sitting in your actual Cambridge exam. So this is the system that I have been implementing with my students for past 14, 15 years, and this works amazingly. So this works for everyone, even if you're like two days, three days before your exam, and you're listening to this video, you can start implementing this, and this will work wonders for you. I hope you understand the system and if you have any queries, do leave me a comment in the comment section below and I wish you a lot of luck for your exam day. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Goodbye.